All right, so now we are officially live streaming on Facebook. Uh, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here for another month of Book Club, uh, Red or Green Books. This month, uh, we are going to be talking about the book Was, and this is by Elizabeth Oots, who is um, an incredible woman and artist and author now in her own right. <laughs> Part of Red or Green Books, we're so excited and we're so honored to um, have you today. For those who are not familiar with Book Club, you do not have to have purchased a copy to be attending today. You do not need to have read the book to attend today. However, uh, for the entire month of April, now here in 2023, uh, the book is $5 off. And when you go to check out, you just put in coupon co code OUTS, uh, O-U-Z-T-S, and uh, that'll give you $5 off. That may reflect in a free shipping or it may reflect in the price itself but either way um you'll have uh, five dollars off this book which you you got to get this book it's amazing uh she also includes in her book um a bunch of beautiful photographs and artwork. I mean, this woman is just sensational and she'll sign it for you and send it to you. All sales of the books during book club go directly to the author. So it's it's a really great program to be able to do this, okay? Uh, so we'll kind of do a quick little kind of chit chat and then um, I'll introduce Elizabeth and her book and uh, she's going to go and she's going to go. She's got up to 30 minutes. I mean, or as long as really she wants to, to read today uh, and also to be talking about whatever it is that she wants to be talking about for the press, as far as the press goes. And I'm so excited. Like Elizabeth, um, I met her. This is the power of friendship, right? Really the power of friendship and networking and knowing people. Elizabeth was referred to me by Shane uh, Maynor with Gorilla Poets. We do a lot of work with Shane. Shane was our, our initial cover artist here at the press and did quite a bit of the covers. And then she said, you you should go look at Elizabeth. She she wants someone to help publish her book of poetry. I was like, oh my God, let's go. And, and she came on board as she was part of our 2022 day debut poets last year and she's just been a joy to work with and her artwork is so stunning and Elizabeth if you need screen sharing privileges uh during this time I'm gonna go ahead and make you a co-host uh so that you have the ability to share screen um y'all like the black and white is great but it doesn't do justice to her work <laughs> uh her work is so interesting and it really makes me personally as an artist think outside the box and really what we can do with materials uh with um concepts with um composition uh it's it's very outside the box the way she thinks and it's it's an incredible challenge for the mind so if you want to share screen now, you're co-host, so you totally have those permissions. Um, announcements for um, red or green books. Don't forget, uh, we launched American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence, right? We have the 200-page literary anthology. There's 67 contributors in there. We have the full-color art book. There's 14 contributors in here. Between these two books, we're representing 26 United States, 26 states in the U.S., and eight different countries. So it's an incredible project to do this. Uh, we also have a sponsor, a senator program. If you want, uh, you can go to the website and only for only $15, uh, get a, a sponsor, a senator book, which is uh, we will anonymously send it to you, U.S. state senator of your choice. If you go to the website, redorgreenbooks.com, red R E A D, then uh, you can see which states are still available that uh, have not uh, been sold out yet. Of course, there's only two in every state plus two in DC. So uh, if, you, if you would like to do that, maybe you can't afford the full book, but you can do a sponsor, a senator. Our goal as the press is to send this book to every single US state senator. Uh, we also have an outreach committee, which we have formed to work with other organizations that have kind of sprung out of gun violence and of course, mass shootings, shootings in school, different uh, different places that have come out of that. So uh, we are moving and shaking as uh, an organization to try to become part of the solution, to be part of the movement, all right? Uh, next month's book club, we have S.Z. Putnam. So don't uh, don't slouch, right? Especially fellow poets who maybe didn't buy their book the first uh, time around. You get an extra coupon to do that. S's book was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize this year, last year. It's a sensational book. Uh, so again, you know, pick up these books while they're on sale, uh, while you can get them at a discount. Of course, the books are, are usually 15 US dollars plus five shipping. So it's it's not like they're 
um, astronomically expensive, but I understand not all the time can we buy everyone's books. Um, and then last but not least, don't forget the New Mexico State Poetry, I shouldn't say state, New Mexico Poetry Summit. Uh, we're putting on a poetry summit here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we're doing a September 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, it is a wonderful, a wonderful event. We already have over 15 people from out of town coming in here specifically specifically for this event. Like, let's go. Uh, it, tickets are only $25 as long as you purchase them before August. After that, they go up to 50. <laughs> so get your ticket before uh, before August. It's a three-day event. Friday night, we have an open mic. Mr. Speaker and the Greybeards Club are going to be um, uh, hosting that open mic night. Saturday is a full day summit of featured readers and workshops. And then Sunday is a very special VIP, additionally ticketed $20 only. It's only 20 bucks uh, to spend a morning with the Women of Tesoro, which is our worldwide women's organization led by Stacey Dyson, which I'm a part of. So please uh, go to redergreenbooks.com and get your tickets if you would like to come come to the Southwest. It'll be beautiful in September. All right, so uh, welcome, Elizabeth. How are you doing today? Wait, you're me. I can't hear you. I don't know if that's me or you. Did you join audio? Can anyone else hear her? Hopefully it's not me. Okay. What? So I don't hear. I don't hear her. Okay, good. So it's not just me. Um, you don't have your like a Bluetooth connected somewhere else that you don't know about. Yeah, <laughs> I am not tech savvy at all, but that is one thing that I've learned during Zooms. It's usually the fault of a headset. <laughs> no, I still can't hear you. Um. Maybe like click the little carrot. Um, can next you hear me now? Ah, there she okay. is. Yes. Yes. Now can you hear me? Okay. Hi. It wasn't. I don't know what it was. All right. You can try well, to yeah. connect to that, but it was those were dead. Or not or you know, on my phone, one or the other, <laughs> or my husband's headsets downstairs. It's always better to blame it on the husband. Like that is straight <laughs> up. Let's let's stick to that. <laughs> but anyways, how are you today? I'm oh, good. Can you still hear me? Yes, I got you. Okay, I'm afraid to look. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, and so it's supposed to be sunny and like 70 here, but it's really gross out. Like it's well, I guess it's it's humid. It's the south, so it's yeah. But the yeah. storm that moved past us is now coming towards you guys. So. Yeah, and it's just like sitting here, and the grass won't dry. So my husband came with grass. And it's just yeah, we don't have grass really here. Tall. We have rock. <laughs> uh, We have clover, and our neighbors are looking at us like, "Why are you on your lawn?" So yeah, it's uh... <laughs> yeah. Everything, everything we do, they're escaped here. Concrete, stone, rock. Uh, very rarely do we see grass. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's grass. grass is so overrated. <laughs> yeah, the lawns are just yeah, because you're like killing the bees and stuff. So yeah, we're like we're feeding the bees. That's what we're doing. Not that we're just not. Yeah, no, doing well. Yeah, glad to be here. Good to see you. I'm so glad to um, to be featuring your book for book club. Uh, Elizabeth also did the cover art for her book, and um, she is a cover artist now for Red or Green Books. She's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, I figured, like, maybe talk a little bit, if you want, a little bit yeah. about you, uh, yeah. your kind of your story, the story about was. Uh, how how it came about your a little bit of your journey and then I'll read um, I'll read some reviews read your bio and bring okay. you up and come and feature sure so I have probably been writing poetry since I was like second you know like I think my introduction I was thinking earlier was probably Dr. Seuss um, yeah. and my second grade teacher whatever reason I guess we were in South Carolina she was a big fan of Carl Sandburg who's from North Carolina um, and then she like made us memorize poems. And so I like, I can still, I have like Carl Sandburg and Robert Frost poems that like I memorized in second grade. And I guess that was like, the introduction to it. So I got very lucky from public school in South Carolina that had teachers that really value spoken word and poetry. And so I had kind of always done that. And then of course went through the angst for the teenage years with all that, and bleh, you know. <laughs> Then in college, realized uh, I took a creative writing class, loved it, and so 
kind of focused on poetry, did an independent study on poetry in college, and then got to grad school and had like all of that. <laughs> yeah. It was just too much. Yeah, you know, it was just, you know, it was, you were supposed to be there to be a teacher and all that. And so really after grad school, I was going to be an English professor, realized I hated teaching. So that really, they don't really like you to be like a professor if you like <laughs> classes. I'm like, okay. So I did other, I had a meandering career through a bunch of different jobs, um, ended up a business analyst um, at a fortune, two different Fortune 100 companies, um, and and really didn't write at all during that time. I mean, read a lot, I love reading, but didn't write at all. Um, it, like I said, I feel like I just, it had just gotten tamped down and it just, you know, wasn't there. And then it was right before COVID, my company decided they were going to offer a whole bunch of people a voluntary separation package. Mm-hmm. And they offered it to like way more people than <laughs> they should have because everybody took it. They like wow. underestimated how much people hated working there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like it was really terrible. Some people like they had like they accepted it and they're like, oh, we're sorry, but you don't get to quit. Um, so I, you know, went back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, I don't love this job. I love the people I work with, but package and then I took six months off and did nothing work related but during that time I like you know what I'm gonna write poetry I'm gonna paint I'm just I'm gonna go on long walks I'm gonna do whatever Mm -hmm. and that was a huge gift because I know not that's a huge privilege not everybody gets that um and and I do know how fortunate I was to have that time um and just to be able to do that but my family does acknowledge that I'm way happier now than I was then and I yell at (laughs) people <laughs> so I'm the button down um so it was a good move and since then I've taken on part-time jobs now working at a nonprofit, which I love um and I'm super happy and I feel so much more creative and like I'm the person I was supposed to be and can just I don't know it's, it's just been a, a real gift to be able to do this um just recently, I've met with a few other people here in Charlotte who are either poets or artists or just creatives, and we've, like, started a Facebook page for, like, 50, call 50 over 50, trying to get at least 50 women who are over 50 oh, um, together to, like, there's, you know, because it's not, we're all very privileged. We all know that, but we also are a minority in the, in the kind of artistic community because we aren't men. Um mm-hmm. We, you know, we all were kind of self-taught. So we just, and then we're hoping, and we don't have the resources necessarily to, you know, rent a gallery. So we're talking about trying to get space together and doing maybe some, you know, poetry and words together. And, you know, like somebody, you know, if there's five of us, we could afford a gallery wall. So sure. and stuff like that. So that, I feel like I've really kind of come into my own and I'm happy and um, I have, I've been doing more art recently than poetry. And so I'm trying to figure out what that's about. So I have an art therapist. Who's <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> She's great. I we, should recommend it. Do, uh, we should do a little full color art book for the 50 over 50s. Oh, that's a good idea. That would be amazing. Hmm. If I want to do somebody who's a publisher. Gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And like how I met you is like, I, I really don't remember. I met. Elizabeth Palmasano somehow here in Charlotte and through Elizabeth I met Shane and through Shane I attended uh like a poetry like a Thursday night workshop and that's how I met you but it's just like I really don't I I like have this like I don't know it's a blog but I can't remember how I actually met all of you know this the beginning of that but it's been great so yeah I just Uh, remember getting an email from Shane saying hey uh you need to contact Elizabeth (laughs) a book she wants published and I was like okay okay <laughs> and then I was like oh crap and then and I was like oh, I'll do it and then like I started to get ready for it and then I'm like oh crap you know but I was like you know I can do this and it's been great I mean it's been really well received and it was just so good for me to do it it was completely therapeutic and now I'm really wanting to maybe 2024 will be my next one so we'll, I'm working on stuff so that would be so much fun. So I love wonderful. watching people put out additional literature, right? Additional books. It's just, it's so important to keep going with it, right? But your first one, it's like your baby. Right? Yeah, it <laughs> is. And it's, and it's stuff that like I wrote in nothing pre-college because that was meh. 
Um, but his stuff I wrote, some of the stuff I wrote in college, especially when I was like a senior and and doing my own like poetry um, seminar thing. And then, so it really spans from either being like 30 years old to being stuff I wrote two years ago. But what's, I guess what kind of, you know, it's still me, but I guess it's kind of interesting that my voice sort of stayed the same in some ways, but it's like, you know, it's like sure. kind of studying like, okay, what a 22 year old wrote versus what a 52 year old wrote and like how your priorities, yeah. what your focus is. But yeah, my next one's going to be very much um, angry. <laughs> so the next one's going to be a 50 year old angry white woman. That's, but that's totally valid, right? I mean, that's how we process stuff. It is, yeah. uh, it's a totally valid emotion. It's an absolutely, totally okay thing to write about, and it's so cathartically healing when you get it on the page and then you, and you read it, you see it like come to fruition. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. What I'm it's, hoping I've got a lot of, yeah, not anger issues, but there's just stuff I'm mad about, and I'm gonna write about. It. So we're we're all mad. We're all mad right now. <laughs> the world is not. I know. Not if you're not mad, you're not paying attention. Yeah. That's, oh my God. It's so true. Um, yeah, that is so, so, so true. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read a few of the reviews from oh, Elizabeth's you. book was, and then I will read you her bio. Um, and I real I know that your Instagram handle has changed now from it what's has. in the book. So yes. when, um, when I invite you up, just um, make sure you give everyone any updated handles so that they can find you, especially those who might watch this video back, you know, at a later date. But here we go. Elizabeth Oots was, uh, excuse me, Elizabeth Oots has bravely written the bittersweet hope and grief of nostalgia, honorarium of memory and release. This book is a journey through honoring as well as the letter, letting go of places, things, people, and ways of being that have poured into the making of who we are. Elizabeth's language is sweet and sharp and has the, ca uh, the capability of holding complex feelings in precise lines that offer support and stability in these moments that seem to flutter between our fingers. With palpable imagery, you can almost smell the sweet grass, hear the cicadas and feel the sea tugging at you through the wind. This book is meant to be experienced and partnered with Elizabeth's beautiful photography, adding that desire of capturing these moments before they pass. Allow yourself to be swept away. <clears throat> You're going to enjoy the ride. <clears throat> and that was uh, written by Shane Maynard with Guerrilla Poets. Uh, Rick Prill, who is an award-winning author of La Chimere of Prague, and I apologize if I miss pronounce anything. I can never I'm pronounce sorry. it. Sorry. Chimera, but anyway, Chimera, I think, yeah. Chimera. 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 All right, so this is Rick Prill's uh, review. Was, by Elizabeth Oots, is a daring collection of poetry spanning more than 30 years. At, at once ephemeral, vibrant, and limin lim liminal, her work conjures vivid moments and exalts in memory. Surprising juxtaposition and stark imagery make these poems dance, both lyrical and narrative from the first person point of view and the third. This collection, which includes several poems that have been published in literary journals, delves into themes such as existence and non-existence, memory, mental health, regular life, and moments of joy. The storms and the telephone poles, the fairies of childhood, just out of reach. And I will read you uh, Elizabeth's um, about the author bio. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Oots is an escapee from the world of corporate finance <laughs> who is learning to trust herself as a poet, artist, and person. She's been lucky enough to learn from and become friends with amazing poets and artists who have supported and encouraged her as she finds her voice and style and decides what's next. A volunteer for social justice, advocate for ending period poverty, an avid data geek, Elizabeth lives and works in Charlotte, North Carolina with her husband, teenager, and nutty cats. 
When she's not working, writing, or painting, Elizabeth can be found reading, gardening, or sitting on her back porch. You can find her Facebook, E-O-U-Z-T-S. Her website is ElizabethOots.com. She has a new Instagram handle, which I'll, yes. I'll let her tell you. Y'all <laughs> unmute your mics. Give it up for the one and only Miss Elizabeth Oots, author of Was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love your uh, Chucky. I love your uh, logo. That's really cool. Thank you. So, thank you. Yes. Um, and thanks for having me here today. Uh, yeah. And I am an escapee from the world of corporate um, finance, and I do love data. So, that's that's always, um, I'm happy if anybody wants like data done, let me know. I always love doing that. Um, and just start the, the title of the book is Was. Um, which is also the title of the first um, poem in the book. This is one that I wrote, uh, oh God, well, yeah, a long, long time ago when I was in college. Um, and I'll go ahead and read that one first. So this is was, the house that once stood in the clearing between two fields of corn now sits on the brink of falling, becoming earth again. A tin roof of gray and rust, dented by summers of hail, struggles to hold up collapsing walls. Splintered port trails lean forward and back, threatening to twist apart if a slight breeze pushes past. Windows shattered in cobweb shapes hang brown with dirt on dirt from too little rain and long unplanted fields. Inside, on a moldy pine floor, chipped glasses, bowls, plates lie under 20 or more years of dust while black spiders weave transparent shrouds. So that's an old one. Then let's see. I was kind of trying to go kind of in order. Um, the, the way they're done in the book is kind of back and forth between old and new. Um, and a lot of it's kind of seasonal, um, at least in my mind when I organized these. It was from fall to winter to spring to summer. Let me see. The next one I wanted to read for you is called Weekend at Grandmother's. And here's the, oh, let me show the picture. Can I show my Oh, I think you can just see. Never mind. So this is a picture of this is purple. It's hard to see, but it's purple and green okra, which reminds me of my grandmother's. Oops. Weekend at grand weekends at grandmother's. Weekends at grandmother's, Roseville, South Carolina. Nowhere on the map. We battled the witchy pecan with sticks and rocks. Rode the giant propane tank, an elephant or horse or car. Ran with the goats, swinging orange glass citronella lanterns. Our pool, a rusted wheelbarrow. The only danger, an electric fence. We'd all grabbed and like memory, could not let go. And fun fact, if you do grab the wrong two wires on an electric fence, you really can't let go. So true story there. And my grandparents did have goats. Um, and the next poem is one that I wrote um, when I was 22. It was when um, the first of my grandparents, my grandfather passed away um, very suddenly while I was in college. And so he was a woodworker. And um, before he had passed away, he had bought five cedar um, uh, fence posts from a guy just he saw out in his field. And he took the fence post and planed them and made them into cedar chests for me and my sister and my cousin. So um, this is in honor of my grandfather. Cedar chest for Frank Raymond. The, the cedar chest granddaddy made four months before he died, sits in his workshop, gathering dust, waiting for me to bring it home. But there is not enough room in my house or my life, not yet, for a reminder of what I lost when a broken vessel took him out of reach. It is too soon for the absence of tears when I think of the smooth wood, sanded inside and out by hands rough from years at the lumber yard. Time has not taken me far enough from January that I can bear to the smell of cedar and varnish or flannel shirts and aftershave. So for now, the cedar chest sits and patiently waits for me to bring it home and fill it with as much love as he put into it. And that cedar chest is actually now in the next room over. And uh, it's a great cedar chest. And then this is the picture that goes with that one. And it's just a picture of, oops, 
It's a picture of boards. This is actually from the Van Gogh show here in Charlotte. Um, the, the place they had the Van Gogh show was a, a munitions factory. So the, the floors are made out of wooden bricks so that the, the munitions didn't explode if they were dropped. So that just reminds me of my grand. Another old one that was written um, kind of goes family member to family member. So um, those are my two grandparents. And this one is um, really reminds me of my mother and my sister. So this one's called Gentle Leaves. Behind my mother's house, a mimosa with gentle leaves that fold from the touch of butterfly wings has been spattered with thousands of blossoms, white makeup brushes dipped in strawberry pink powder, and in its shade, Queen Anne's lace sways slowly, marking the hours of our childhood spent making potions from honeysuckle one drop at a time. Chains of clover blooms, delicate and sweet, offerings for the fairies, my sister and I knew lived just beyond our imaginations. And if anybody has questions while I'm in, please let me know. Let's have these all carefully marked and of course now I can find them. This one is a newer one um, written actually um, inspired by my art therapist. And here's the black and white photo. It's of a zinnia. And here's the color. Here's the colored photo of it. There you go. I can get it. Let me end it. Bring my back. This is the the colored version, printed. So this one is called Daily Delights for Trauma Therapy Homework. To heal the wounds, I'm finding daily delights, listing them one by one in a notebook shared only with my therapist. The list is a poem of good and great things, small and large that warm me here and move the anger out of the deep. A cat on a leash, snow on a Monday, Christmas lights in March, late blooming azaleas, toddler sized collars, things that at once surprise and slam me into the now that is still good and still worth staying. And back to one, this is another old one. Um, actually, no, it's not. It seems old to me, but it is actually new. Um, and this was actually, this one came from an art therapy session where you answer the question, like, instead you just have the statement, I am, and then you write, I am, and list everything that you are um, to try to get you kind of out of your head, out of your um, comfort zone that I am like you know, a wife, a mother, a worker, um, but to try to express who you really are. So this one is called, I am. I am biscuits and grits, screen porches and screech of cicadas. I am swing sets, sandboxes, a playhouse with lights. I am sweet tea, Sunday school, water skiing at the lake. I am turkey and dressing and oyster roast, driveways two miles long. I am pine trees, dogwoods, Queen Anne's place beside an old dirt road. I am cars on blocks, trees growing through tractors, barns collapsing on themselves. I am kudzu, Sunday lunch at Beebe's. Two meats, four veggies, perfect meat scrolls. I am Raymond's groceries, a giant wheel of cheese, a walk-in freezer. I am 100-pound bags of rice, medicated salt licks, a loaded gun. I am deer season, turkey season, quail season, dove season, shotguns, and rifles. I am blue tick hounds, blue crabs, Uncle Johnny's camp in the marsh. I am puff mud, sandy towels, porpoises, and shrimp boats. I am flower seafood, the sea cow, Botany Bay. I am vacations to one house, beachfront, big porch, family. I am Highway 25 from college to home. A lineage of kindness, a childhood as comfortable as a cotton dress, knowing I mattered and was loved as much as I loved those things long past. And so quick info on that. So this is really kind of a, a history of my life. Um, you know, I am from South Carolina. My parents both are from South Carolina, as are my grandparents and great-grandparents. So um, very much as a, 
a small town Southern family. Um, so um, a lot of that is just, you know, what I grew up remembering from trips, you know, from family vacations. <clears throat> the part about salt licks, just so you know, medicated salt, salt licks do not taste good. My cousins and I decided we would try those at my grandfather's store, and it was gross. Um, but I think we probably have improved our immune systems. Um, I'm going to move to some more. Um, this is a newer poem. Um, this one <clears throat> probably just helped if you knew some history. Um, my daughter attempted suicide when she was 13. Um, and while it was not what they would consider a serious, I guess, attempt, it was something that would not have resulted in her death. She was self-harming. Um, and, and there was just a lot going on with her at the time. So this is kind of um, me kind of trying to, to wrap my head around what happened to her. Um, this was uh, seven years ago now. Um, she's a freshman in college doing really well. Um, has really come into her own and, and has, has battled her demons and at this point is winning. So that's the good news. Um, but this was kind of where we were at a few years ago. Um, and this actually came from a um, Charlotte, I think it was a Charlotte Writers Club, um, a Monday night um, writing um, prompt that said, you know, we were going to talk about the new year and resolutions and that resolution in the beginning met um, it meant to um, to do more and be more, um, and it's from the Latin resolvere. So this was called resolution from the, Latin, uh, from the Latin resolvere. Before we made this attempt, sorry, let me start over. Before we made this a New Year's attempt to force ourselves to be better, do more, stop this, start that, it meant to release, to loosen, to give things over and let things go. This year, I will let go of self-hate. People who were no longer friends, fears that no longer serve me, loosen the tight red threads of anxiety that cut off my circulation like a string on my finger, reminding me that everything will never be okay. I will unwind the knot that sits a millimeter in front of my heart, causing, bit, mit, causing beats to skip, pressing on my lungs so that no breath is ever a deep cleansing one. I will slacken the noose that will snap my neck every time she's sad for too long in the bathroom with razors, asleep for days, all the things that will rock the chair from beneath my feet. Lots of sticky. Next one I'm going to read is, again, a new one. It's called Christmas Lights. And this one is really about the ending of a friendship, which I guess in some ways is harder than ending of a, of a, of a romantic relationship. But this was a friend I've had for years, and things didn't work out. And so um, just going to go ahead and read this one. Christmas Lights. Christmas Lights on the screen porch, still up in June, compete with fireflies. Fewer and further between, still magical and miraculous. You shine like those lights, steady and strong, unfaltering, set to come on at seven and go off at midnight. Artificial but dependable until the power goes out. A summer storm blowing trees onto transformers. Then you go dark, useless glass baubles on a line. I'm flickering insects, pale flash, creamy yellow, lasting just minutes after the sun goes down and the temperature drops, flashing the signal to the universe, see me, see me, but eclipsed by you until the thunder rages and the ozone snaps. <laughs> Marissa, are you back? <laughs> Marissa had a drink, drink emergency. Hi, Kim. How are you? Thanks for joining. 
Hello. I just got the invite um, just as I was getting home. So I apologize for being late, but I just heard your last two poems. So thank okay, you. No problem. And everybody, this is uh, Kim Adana. She's going to be publishing soon in the next uh, group of poets, I guess, along with um, Shakti G. And she's got some amazing poets and she did me the honor of picking me to do her cover work. So that is very exciting for me. So we've been working on that and we're like, this far from being done. So I'm just going to take the last photographs and get those put in the template and I think we'll be good to go. So fun. it's been really fun. So just like not something, it's like not something I'm used to doing, but I'm really liking it. So it's been really fun. It has been wonderful, and you've been an absolutely stellar uh, collaborator and oh, thank you. artist, thank you. so thank you. <laughs> so getting me out of my comfort zone and doing stuff that I'm like, oh, I don't do landscapey things. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Luckily, been... we got lucky. I had just shown uh, Kim some examples of stuff I'd done, and she's like, oh, go back to that one. And I'm like, yeah, what about this? And then like, yeah, that was it. So it's, uh, um, and just for my art, a lot of what I do is just, uh, well, it's all abstract. Um, and then a lot of what I do is is doing art over books. Um, so let me show you. Let's take a break from you. So this is The Razor's Edge by Somerset Mom, which I tried to read one time thinking, I don't know what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I didn't like it. So I've like, I've started um, like for my like hundred days of art and like coloring the pages. So stuff like this I like very flowery stuff but then sometimes I get a little darker but, um, let's so here's some of the abstracts you know. but it's like really great to use books because you just buy the book and then you've got like 200 pages like of, you know of, uh, of uh, canvas to use so yeah so these are some of just my abstracts yeah. I do a lot of those there's something to do when I get home from work and if you like feel less crazy. Um, and I'll take a, a brief pause now, I guess, if you've got questions or want to hear any more backstories. I think most of my poetry does tend to come from like my real life, um, whether that's like, you know, very direct or indirectly. Um, so it's like I try to change the names to protect the guilty, but... <laughs> Yeah, you've got well, I, I would say like what <clears throat> what was the most challenging part of publishing and what was the most rewarding or memorable part? Okay, so the most challenging part, which seems kind of mundane, was actually putting them in the order to be in the book because I printed them all out and then I, I <laughs> went in the living room and like tried to figure out like did I want sections? Did I want, you know, like at one point I was going to call them like was and then now or try to do like you know summer fall winter that was really the hardest part for me is trying to figure out how they flowed into each other and so luckily my friend Rick who was one of the reviewers is also a huge data geek and he had like scanned the poems in and then run them through uh, I have to get him to share this with me ran them through some um some app he has and so he came back up with like how many times I've repeated certain words I mean, not like V and N, but like how many times the word cicada had come up or summer. And so he had done the slight like spreadsheet and graphs for me. And so that really helped me um, kind of figure out thematically how they went from one to the other because it like they didn't really fit. Um, there wasn't like a geography to them or a chronology to them. So that really helped me kind of figure out like how they would flow. So I found that to be the hardest part. The scariest part was actually sending it to you. And like, oh shit, she's gonna like, she's gonna publish this and then it's gonna be a book and then people can see it and like, oh my God. Um, so that was scary, but that was also the rewarding part. And then having people read it and touched by it. Um, one of the most touching was a really dear friend of mine's daughter, who's the same age as my daughter. Um, just when she found out I was I was writing the book, was like, oh, can I read it? So she was my, my first readers. And actually, there's a poem in here called Middling Invisible. And I had written to her and her mom and said, like, give me just a random phrase and I'll write a poem. And so that poem is based on this phrase they gave me. But like she came over one afternoon and I thought she, we were just going to have tea and hang out. And she was like she had had a notebook and written down questions about like specific poems. And I just felt like that was like 
so amazing that like this kid wanted to know more and that she thought that the stuff was meaningful and like like I felt famous you know <laughs> it's like oh my god this, this person you know like she's been moved by this and wants to know the process and how all this came to be so that was that was amazing and then you know having my my, my daughter and my husband be really proud of me I think that was you know because there was that huge oh shit factor <laughs> of like this is really going to be published and then but yeah having people like have like tell me after they've gotten it like these are my favorites or like and why and I think that that has just been really really cool I see Kim's like shaking her head up and down, nodding her head, you know, she, because it's when I tell, I tell the, you know, the new generation of, of poets, I say, you know, what you're going through, I promise you the poets before you have gone through. Yeah. yeah. And so when we launched Elizabeth, we had had the 20 poets from 2020 go through it as well. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's a matter you know, of laying those layers uh, foundation down where you get to see people do it. Um, you get to hear some of their experiences, their knowledge, uh, impart some of their journey uh, so that you, you know, all the new poets who are coming or the next poets who are coming uh, can feel a little confidence that community, right? We're building community with each other. Yeah. Uh, together we all rise is kind of my motto. So uh, watching uh, women do it, right? We're female forward press, so we publish the majority of women, the majority of women of color uh, or, or groups that have been marginalized and stigmatized. So it's, it's so incredibly important to watch your peers do it first uh, yeah. and to know that they were okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, I don't really live. It, it was true that because with like, you know, you know, when I joined your your press there were people from the year before who you know I came to stuff and listened to them and just hearing them read and I'm like okay I can do this you know it's because of course you start second guessing yourself and you, you know this isn't good but it you know it's just you get it out there and people are just you know so proud of you and then you're proud of yourself and it's just you know it's and what you write might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it might be somebody's and the, the fact that it could speak to somebody else just like dawns on you and you're like wow this is you know, this is why we do this, and this is why we need art, and, like, with your, with the new um, American Graveyard, like, art to speak out on social issues. I mean, if the artists don't do it, nobody does it, so I think, you know, stuff like that has just been, just been really great. Yeah, uh, the work that we do allows the trickle down effect, right, uh, to be able to do more projects, to do more things, to sponsor poets, to sponsor projects, to be able to to do all of that, right? And this, it wouldn't happen without you and all the other authors. Yeah, you can go, Lisa. Uh, being part of <laughs> being part of the journey here um, of what it is that you know we're doing here at the press, but. Yeah. Um, well, so do you, are, are you going to, do you, are you going to keep reading? You, you definitely have some more time if you wanted to read a few more. Well, let me see. I'll read a couple more. Okay. May I put in a special request? Yes. Have, have you already <laughs> read Crows? No. Okay. So only if, if you want to, but that was just my little request. <laughs> Hold on, I'll find it. Oh, I like this one too. I think this is a medium one. I think I actually did write this at the beach. So that was, you know, like the right place, the right time. Um, so this one's called Crows. The crows who do not belong here jolt me out of a reverie of sun and shore with loud fucking calls and awaken sleeping cicadas who hum and thrum their songs for two minutes then return to the dreams of flight and sex. I do not live here, but in my marrow I belong, as did my mother and hers before her. I have come here to write and find a voice silent for too long, to play at painting and discover hidden shades at my core. The words have to be perfect, but the colors can dance and swirl and drip across the page, sensual, filled with hate, blissed out, and gen drunk. And so the, I do like this one and I forget about this one a lot because um, I find like it's so much easier. I had always considered myself more of a writer. You know, I did crafts, but I wasn't an artist. Um, but now it's so much easier for me to come home and like spend an hour painting and doing stuff 
But then when it comes to writing, it's so much harder because it just feels not like work, but like it, like I said here, it has, it has to be right. And like I put the pressure, I think a lot of people do that too. Like you've got, it has to be right the first time or it's not worth writing down. <laughs> and so then it's just like battling with yourself, like just put it down. You can edit it. That's why you're doing it. And so that's a lesson that I'm like trying to learn is just write it all down and go back versus like trying to keep it in my head, <clears throat> you know, cause you come up with these perfect lines. You're like, oh, I'm going to remember that tomorrow. You never remember, you never remember it tomorrow. It's like, oh my God, that's so true, right? It's so it true. Is. And I actually have, there's a poem in here. Let me find it. That's about that. And let's see, where did it go? Well, I know it's in the book. <laughs> it's not mixed media, is it? That's not what you're thinking of? And like, no, it's not. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Oh, here it is. It's slip away. That's it. Should have remembered. There is something I remember each morning as I wake that slips away as I tell myself I won't forget. The perfect phrase drips away, a dust mote in a ray of sun captured by a tiny demon bent on collecting all those things in the tip of my brain. Memory that will not hold, just out of reach. Words on scraps of paper, brilliant brilliant at their writing, but now strange strings of random words, offering no clues to whatever the hell I thought was worth writing down. What the hell could have I have been thinking? Words written in the dark, almost illegible in the daylight, the thing that breaks your heart, scrawled on a receipt, and I have no idea if that's the answer to a question or the beginning of the next poem. That's my other one. I want to close. And this one, I have, I guess the middle was sort of like the ones that were poems about poems <laughs> or writing. So this one's called On the Verge of Night. On the verge of night, I sit on the porch and sweat, hoping words will flow out and drop onto this page. The fan cools, but not enough for thoughts to condense. I stretch right, left, relax my shoulders, searching for a comfortable stance, a moon salutation, then slightly awry. My favorite blue pen held tight, starts a word, from, but meanders into a flower, then a five-pointed star, and rows of triangles. I focus on my breath, intent in, words out, pen to paper in a series of positions, each meant to give rise to a meaningful thought, a goddess, a crescent, a mountain. But this is what I do when I write. So I'll show you. Hold on. So I'm supposed to be writing, and then there's this doodle. <laughs> there's so many. Here's one. Yes, yeah, that was supposed to be a poem. That's just doodles. So I find myself doing that, just like, I do it at work too, but I did read somewhere that people who doodle are like, it's a sign that you are paying attention and it helps you retain the information. So like, I'm hoping that's true because when like employers have seen like notes and I'll flip back, they're like, I think it's on the left page. And they're like, yeah, why is there like a picture of a shark? I'm like, just ignore the shark and here's the information you need. But yeah, I have always done that. I've just been a big doodler. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, this is so awesome. Do you did you do you have another, one more to uh, to close us, and we can yeah. do uh, a little summary or how, do you, how are you feeling? 
Yes, I will read one more. I'm trying to figure out which one. Okay, Jeff. I'm going to read this one. Um, this one's called One Door. When one door opens, I'm sorry, that's totally backwards. Um, <laughs> when one door closes, another door opens, but sometimes it's the door to an empty elevator shaft. Pitch black, echoing empty, one step and you're gone. Or a louvered door, squeaky hinges, jamming at every attempt to close, so you just give up. Or a Dutch door, the top locked, so you have to duck under, careful not to bump your head. When one door closes, maybe don't look for op other open doors. Find a window so you can see what's next. Oh, yes, let's go. <clears throat> Elizabeth, Yay. it's y'all unmute your mics. Please give it up for our, our feature author this month, Miss Elizabeth okay. Ooth, and her incredible book was. You. Oh, and you if can you find want... me. You can find me. Uh, oh, thank you. You can find me on Instagram now at elizabeth.oot.art. Um, I'm like this. I switched it and then didn't realize, hey, it doesn't forward you from the old one to the new one. So, and oot says O U Z T S, and it rhymes with oots. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, for the entire month of April, you can get this book for $5 off. The coupon code is oots. It is her last name, O U Z T S. Uh, that'll give you five dollars off of her book. Uh, it may it may give you either five the free shipping or the five dollars off the oh, book. I'm yeah. not sure, but either way, <clears throat> it will take off five dollars from your total. And uh, all of the authors' uh, sales this month go directly to her. So uh, get her book. Uh, get to give one away. Right. Uh, <laughs> Mother's Day is coming up. <laughs> yeah, Mother's Day is coming up. If you're an international um, a purchaser, just email me, Marissa, at redergreenbooks.com or go to Red or Green Books, the website, R-E-A-D, and uh, I can quote you an international shipping charge. Uh, so, that yeah, th there's no reason uh, not to get her book. She's just <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and, and, yeah, the book is there. She'll sign it for you. She'll send it to you. Uh, awesome, awesome, great stuff. Don't forget, pick up your copies of American Graveyard, Calls to End Gun Violence, if you've not done that yet, or sponsor a senator uh, so that we can get that uh, going yeah. to all U.S. state senators. Have and you, then, do you, oh, do you know right offhand has North Carolina gotten one for their senator? I don't, I don't know. I would have okay. to go on the website and I'll look and see if there's any left. Um, yeah. But there are plenty of states that don't, don't have <laughs> yeah, senators yeah. yet. Uh, that don't have books out to senators, so. Oh, uh, and Shaki has a question. What, <clears throat> what kind of things did you do locally to promote my book? Um, can I answer that? Is that okay? Yes, please. So um, the first thing I did was just, I had it all over my social media, and then I hosted a little um, reading and um, kind of like book signing party here at my house. And then um, here in Charlotte, there's the Charlotte, Charlotte Lit and then Charlotte Writers Club. And both of them let you like send in when you publish something or have something new, you can send into their kudos page. And they were really great. Like at the next meeting after they published you or after you, they published the kudos um, to let you bring your books and have them there for sale. And then um, I'm trying to think where else I've done it here in Charlotte. A few other places, just social media has helped a lot with that and then um also like local um bookstores if they're um you know their independent bookstores are really willing to have, let you have you know they'll they'll take like park road books here in charlotte will take five on consignment um and then you know when they run out if they run out they'll ask you for more so it's not like a women situation so and, and and consider the content of your book you know um for example uh, my first book was Conversations with Grief. So it uh, talks a lot about grief. It also talks about a lot about grief and motherhood. So going to different grief type outreach organizations, um, churches, support groups, um, health, uh, mental health facilities, uh, youth uh, centers, d d you know, different mother groups, um, those, you know, are also things to consider when um, looking at how to outreach your book mm -hmm. so and also get get even more creative than that like coffee shops <clears throat> not just bookstores necessarily mm -hmm. but 
Um, you could go to just different places that deal in books like comic book places. Um, there are lots of different vintage book places here that might not necessarily do deal with poetry, but they might really like the concept of your book. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do um, in your own community. I know mm -hmm. like Patty, Patty Orozco, she has her book at Cattleman's Steakhouse in <laughs> El Paso, right? She works there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's in the display case behind glass right. with a light on it, right? Uh, so like y'all are not bound to only think about where could a book of poetry go. It's where it has a book of poetry not gone yet uh, that you could get your book in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the women's erotic anthology, right? Uh, we were try, we we're getting it into seductions here locally, which is a, a retail store it has nothing necessarily to do with books, but <laughs> uh, the, the content, right? Uh, the LGBTQ anthology is at Stonewall in New York City. So, like, you know, where can you put um, your book for your content mm -hmm. in your community, and then of course globally? And you can always start your own events locally. If you start your own event locally, you start your own event online, like now you have places, you have yeah. a platform to amplify your message. And even as Elizabeth was reading today, I was like, oh my God, she should totally do like an art, an art and writing workshop once a month at Word is Right. Like <laughs> if you came and you did like a, a an art and poetry, like, you know, like a tutorial, like a tutorial yeah. how to, and you know, you, you have your supply list. So they got to come with their supply list that month and do <laughs> artwork, art with Elizabeth uh, or something like that would, that I would love that. Yeah. <clears throat> so having your own kind of show or having your own platform where you can amplify your merch, your sales, um, all of that other stuff too. And then I think Chanson had a, has a question too. I don't know how long it would take to compile mine. So to, to compile it all was, I think I met you in like, a, it was like January maybe. <coughs> and then the mm -hmm. book came out, was published at the very end of May. So five months. I mean, it took me years to write all the poetry, but I had it all there waiting. So that was different. But the actual like putting it together, going through the editing process, the, getting the photographs in, redoing the cover a thousand times because it couldn't get bunt right. Um, <laughs> that was probably five, it was probably five months from beginning to end of like all of that. So, um, but not every day and not, you know, it was kind of like a process. Like I'd get it to Marissa, she would give it a paper, come back, like what about, you know, some of the early stages were, were editing publicly. And then after that, it was more just like up to me to like decide how, how I wanted to organize. I don't and know if that's an did, average or she did mention that uh her work is over the course of like 30 years right so <laughs> I mean like literally 30 you know yeah plus years, years of, of work yeah. but as far as actually like picking and choosing which poems and putting that together in a book um and you make a bunch of interesting points you're one of the things you said earlier was um, I had to just make a decision and let it go or something to that effect, because if you keep picking at it, picking at it, picking at it, or you wait to put it down when it's right, uh, sometimes you won't right. get to it. And a lot of poets, they pick and pick and pick and pick and pick, and they can't just like cut it off and send it. Uh, and, and your work's never going to be complete if you do that. Uh, so at some point you have to cut yourself off, let it go, and then start, you know, start again, flip the page, start again, uh, and, and, you know, sayonara that. But the other thing I do like that you, you talked about was the, a little bit of tribulations with the cover, right? All the tweaks that go are involved in right. it. This is not a super easy process where you're one and done, bam, you have a book. There's a lot of editing. There's a lot of revisions. There's a lot of going back and tweaking and changing. And I know some of the poets historically who have had a, an enormous amount of, of additions or revisions um, don't really like the fact that they had a lot of revisions. <laughs> but that's sometimes the process. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you get it done and it's like, just a couple tweaks and it's done. And then sometimes you're like weeks fixing something. Uh, it's, we never know how it's gonna go. So you have to be patient and you know, you have to be kind and grant yourself a lot of grace, grant your cover artists a lot of grace. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's a process though, but it's like, but you know the process. And that's the thing is like with having you there, 
you know that it's you know there's like a beginning a middle and an end it does it doesn't last forever the books arrive yeah so that's another rem a reminder when your books arrive make sure you video yourself opening your book because it's like I opened mine and I'm like crap I gotta go back and close it up <laughs> I it's like, so, so excited, I, tell, I, I tell people video yourself because there's only your first book ever once right yeah. uh and so to have that moment because it's a life-changing moment it's a dream yeah. come true it's this thing that you you know you're suddenly now experiencing like, this incredible yeah. thing um but yeah so uh it's it's been awesome it's been amazing uh did anyone else have any other questions for elizabeth before we kind of wrap up today okay it was great questions and i'm so glad yeah. everyone did come with with questions so uh get her book please was is the title of her book it is available at red or green books.com your coupon code is oots o-u-z-t-s that'll get you five dollars off her book all sales this month will go directly to her uh please uh tune in uh next month we have sz putnam and her book um loose change picking up the pieces uh if you you know if you're waiting you know wait for book club get that five dollars off get their book right go straight to the author uh it is a wonderful way to kind of support within the community and build your library over time uh so i'm super super excited uh for all of the things that are coming up get your ticket come to new mexico for the for the mm -hmm. new mexico uh poetry summit here red or green books is putting on otherwise thank you so much elizabeth Oots, for oh, hanging you. out with us Thank you for your time, your reading, the gener generosity and answering questions and just kind of talking about your journey. And um, yeah, let's let's go. I'm excited to see how Kim and Donna's cover comes out. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be beautiful. And uh, thanks, Kim, for coming through on a Saturday. Yeah, I know. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Crazy. It's been fun. But Otherwise, peace and blessings to all of you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Elizabeth, for being book club author here in April 2023. I'll see all you beautiful uh, poets and authors next time. Have a wonderful rest of your Bye. day. Bye. Bye, guys.